Hey, what's up beautiful people listen to Arama, welcome to the channel today we have this very interesting video and it's, and it's from the officer tato and it's titled tim scott on loads on sunny houston life on the view debunking systemic racism myth also i'm excited to hear, check this one out to hear what they've got to say and i also want to listen to what or hear what the officer tato have got to say because i love hearing his opinion especially regarding issues or topics like this so yeah let's check it out America. So I'm about making sure that our kids have as many opportunities to succeed as possible. It's one of the reasons why. I need I an opportunity to well, succeed. Me, 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 <laughs> wait, because I have to go to... Oh, they're we begging. Have more time, to, they're begging. They, we we have more, I'm, just, coming back. I'm just getting started. I, I believe all people can see the success <laughs> that I've had. Tim Scott's clash with the uh, cackling clowns on The View. And the reason that I call them cackling clowns is because I feel like that they are a part of the degeneracy amongst culture because they're too intellectually lazy to do research and go up and beyond their previous uh, belief systems to find the truth. And Tim Scott said a lot of incredible things on there, and I'm not a really big Tim Scott fan, to be honest. Um, and I'm not against Tim Scott. I think he's an incredible man. I just like a little more far right, uh, a little more Larry Elder, uh, when it comes to explicitly saying that racism in America is a farce. You have indicated that you don't believe in systemic racism. What is your definition of systemic racism? Let me ask, answer the uh question that you've answered does asked it or does it even exist yeah. in your mind yeah. let me uh, answer the question this way one of the things that i think about and one of the reasons why i'm on the show is because of the comments that were made frankly on this show that the only way for a young african-american kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule that is a dangerous offensive disgusting message to send to our young people today that the only way to succeed is by being the exception I will tell you that if my life is the exception, uh, I can't imagine. But, but I can't. It is. But it's not actually. Here's here's. It's been here's 114 my, years. Yeah. So so the fact of the matter is, we've had an African American president, African American uh, vice president. We've had two African Americans to be secretaries of the state uh, in my home city. Uh, the police chief is an African American who's now running for mayor. The head of the Highway Patrol for South Carolina is an African American. Still exceptions. In, 19, in 1975, um, there was about 15 percent employment in the African American community for the first time in the history of the country. It's under five percent. Forty percent. And fifty percent homelessness and fifty percent of, of the folks get, in our community. Yeah, thirteen percent of the population. You had a chance to ask the question. I know that I've watched you on the show yes, that you like exactly. people to be deferential and respectful. So I'm going to do the that same is thing. True. So here's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest that the fact of the matter is that progress in America is palpable. It can be measured in generations. I look back at the fact that my grandfather, born in 1921 in Sally, South Carolina, when he was on a on a sidewalk. A white person was coming, he had to step off and not make eye contact. That man believed then, with some doubt now, in the goodness of America because he believed in having faith in God, mm -hmm. faith in himself, and faith in what the future could hold for his kids would unleash opportunities in ways that you, you cannot imagine. Every kid today can look. Just change the stations and see how much progress has been made in this country. ABC, NBC, CBS, ESPN, CNN, Fox News all have African-American and Hispanic hosts. So what I'm suggesting is that the yesterday's exception is today's rule. And for us to so suggest... So America has met its promise. No, of course. The, the concept of America is that we are going to become a more perfect union. But in fact, the challenges that we face 50 years ago and 60 years ago should not be the same challenges that we face today. And here's the way that you, you measure that. When my mother was born, about 10% of African Americans got a high school degree, wow. diploma. Today, it's over 90%. When you look at the income, when you look at the income success that That's we've had... That's an HBCU stat. Well, listen, HBCU stat is a good okay. one because one of the reasons why I took the funding for HBCUs to the highest level in the history of the country and then I helped make it permanent is because I believe that education is the closest thing to magic in America. So I'm about making sure that our kids have as many opportunities to succeed as possible. It's one of the reasons why. I need I an opportunity to well, succeed. Because <laughs> I have to go to... Oh, they're begging. We have more time, to, though. They're begging. They're, we'll we have more. I'm, just, coming I'm back. just getting started. I, know. I believe all. 
of people can see the success that I've had. <laughs> oh, we'll be right okay, back. Okay. <laughs> A lot of successful black people that apply themselves it's not an anomaly it's not like you see a black man in a suit that's successful oh my god i'm shocked there's black mm. people that are successful that's not the case there's a lot of knuckleheads out there that ruin the reputation of good solid respectable black men in america yeah, but you know people that are on the view they are the ones who try to perpetuate i just say it like this black people's own worst enemy is other black people. Yeah. It is. And then second is the white liberal. The worst enemy of the black man in America is first the black man, second the white liberal. And both of them are influenced by the devil. The ones who are perpetuating the the cycle of confusion. Not everybody, right? But the ones who are perpetuating are of the devil. If you look in the mirror, as a young black man in America growing up, Who's the first person to tell you you ain't never going to be nothing? It's mm -hmm. another black man or a black woman, probably your single mother, telling you you ain't never going to be nothing. You, you just like your daddy. Mm -hmm. Or you get to the school and your peers are telling you, oh, you're trying to be white because you're trying to actually get an education and get out the ghetto. Many times this happens. Not every black person is in the, born in the hood, so I'm not talking about every black person. But I'm giving you a, a, a glimpse into the beginning of the victimization of young black people. Yeah. They're being victimized by their own people first. Mm. They're telling you you're not going to be anything. They're telling you the white man hates you. The white man ain't said nothing to you. Mm -hmm. The white man ain't, ha have not done anything to offend you. But your own people have set you up to hate the white man first before the white man can ever perpetuate any level of violence against you. And, in, and odds are that they never will. The leading cause of death for young men my age is being killed by another black man. Mm -hmm. not, not by anything that involves white people. The education system is corrupt. The cities that are in shambles run by Democrats. In many of these cities, the leaders are black. And they run these cities down to the ground. And they turn around and blame the white man for 200 years ago. It, it's, it's, it's asinine to me. I want to make this very clear. Racism in America, pervasive racism, racism that will call, cause young black men to be at a disadvantage, do not exist in America. It's your own people that's doing you like this. Mm. It's your own kind. And, 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 and Tupac said the same thing. He said, they say it's the white man I should fear. But it's my own kind doing all the killing here. Hmm. How's that not true? Look at Chicago, 50-some people shot. Is there white men going in Chicago and shooting them? No, they're not. That's us shooting each other. That's us killing each other. That's us raping each other. That's us abusing our children, not being fathers in the home. That's us doing that. Selling dope to your own brother. Don't blame the white man. You took the, you took the drugs and cooked it and then went out and sold it to your brother and watched him die as you feeding them drugs every week. That's you that did that. That's one thing I never understood because I grew up I grew up in, the, in and around the hood my whole life or at least my whole youth until I became 18 and I went to college and got out of it. But I used to watch the drug dealers in the community and they were superstars. But then one day, I was getting my car washed by them crackheads. Because at the car wash, you get a crackhead, $5, $10, man, he'll detail your whole car. And I was getting ready to get my car washed. I drive around the back of the car wash, and I saw a brother smoking crack. I saw that crackhead that I give money to actually smoking crack, and it did something to me. It hurt me. I said, I cannot believe that I'm funding my brother killing himself. Mm. And, 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 but young, I won't say young, but black leaders refuse to be honest about this. And the condition of black people will never change in America unless black people change it. Change it, yes. Exactly. I, I, I mean, um, Brandon Tatum actually said it all. This is actually the truth.
and lots of people turn a blind eye when um, if um, topics like this are being discussed they'll be like oh um we should talk about what the white man is doing to us the white man is not doing anything to you how about we talk about what you are do doing to your own kind or what the people your kind is doing to your kind it don't make sense i mean i've asked this question before why is nobody talking about black on black crime that is the main issue that is an issue because imagine if a child grows up and um sees that oh this is um they I, I mean there used to be this term i think um was it in a movie or something i can't remember the fight for survival and i'd be like so you think on aliving your own brother or somebody that looks like you is what you what you call survival or what you call the fight for survival it don't make sense it honestly doesn't and the idea that they make it that oh blacks always have to be the victim they always have to play the victim card and all of that craziness so people look at you because that's the only way it doesn't make sense honestly it doesn't because if for once you stop hitting on your skin color you look at the potential tap into the goodness of the land and tap into the good you you won't be hearing all of the excuses or whatever honestly i've said it before and i will say it again that america today is not a racist country there are lots of other countries where racism fully exists and people don't talk about it the reason why people don't talk about it is because when you talk if you talk about racism nobody's going to listen to you for the most part of some countries that i know that nobody they don't talk about it because who is going to listen to you or who do you think is going to handle that situation or handle it nobody's going to do it but in america they cry for racism when you cry you cry out racism call or whatever people don't people come out and they they deal with it however way they can or however way, way possible they can whether true or false whenever i hear people cry and make it seem like oh there's somebody out there that is oppressing you or somebody out there is the reason why you can't succeed and you see you hear people sit down to cry oh i'm i'm a victim this is what they did to my forefathers my ancestors and the lives i'd be like to what end when is this gonna stop honestly if blacks sit down and begin to show love to one another the rest of the world will do or the rest other people will do because you don't love yourself you don't love people that, that look like you how do you expect somebody who doesn't look like you to express the exact the love you don't have or the love you don't give how honestly and i still believe that there is still um, good in the land of america especially in the black community and amongst black people but um yeah i know that one day um, people will get liberated and it's is a gradual process so it's not something to force people to do but at the same time this is something that needs to be worked on and i always love listening to um brandy tatum Jefferson tatum's opinion on this and um i love what he shared and everything he shared is absolutely true but all the same let me know what your thoughts are in the comment down below do you think um america is a racist country and also do you think systemic racism exists in america if you do please explain with context and and i really love your contribution on that you can share all the useful information you think might be really helpful. And until next time, see you in the next video.